Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to buy Bitcoin using the Square app on your mobile phone. So let's get going. So if you're a regular follower of my channel, uh, you probably know that I usually use Coinbase to purchase cryptocurrencies. And then uh, from there, we'll put them on exchanges or move them into wallets or whatever. Uh, but uh, there are other ways to purchase Bitcoin. And uh, I have heard lately that buying Bitcoin through the Square app is becoming more and more popular. So I thought I'd give it a try and uh, kind of walk you guys through the steps. So uh, let's jump over to my screen. All right, I'm uh, sharing my phone here. So we're gonna go to the App Store and we're gonna check for Square. All right, let's check it out here. Uh, there it is, Square Point of Sale. Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, uh, what I want is the Cash App, which is uh, the same company that does Square, I believe. Oh, I guess I already had this installed. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, let's see. How can I buy Bitcoin using this app? All right. So uh, if I go to settings and then scroll down here to uh, funds, you can see that there's a, a cash and BTC. So I'm just going to tap BTC and uh, pull this interface up and how much do I want? All right, so uh, let's see what happens when I hit buy. And I'm just gonna put $25 in and hit buy. All right, so basically you need to uh, fund the uh, app first with uh, cash. So I'm assuming it'll need to connect to my bank or my debit card. Uh, so let me just... Uh, try it this way all right so uh you may want to do this part first and put a little cash in there uh or just kind of do it on the fly the way i'm doing i'm going to go ahead and put in my debit card number I can find my debit all right so i've entered the number and then it uh, flips over and wants the expiration and uh, code which i'm happy to provide them i'll choose next and let's see what happens all right, there's my name. Just confirm that. I got to give them my birth date. And I got to pretty much give them my life story if I want to buy any Bitcoin from them. Not that much different from the, from Coinbase, though. So uh, now I've added the cash to the app. So I'm going to hit done. And now I can buy the Bitcoin. And let's see, I'm going to try 25, but I'm assuming it's probably going to tell me, uh, hmm, okay. All right, and it wants me to uh, put in a pin, so I'll set that up. All right, so I did buy some Bitcoin. Now, I'm assuming that somewhere along the line, they took out a little bit, uh, either as a merchant fee of their own or on the Bitcoin network. Uh, so I didn't quite get $25 worth, but it's not bad. Um, I only paid 30 cents for the $25 in Bitcoin, and that's not horrible, right? All right. Uh, the only thing about this app, and I'm sure that I could uh, use this Bitcoin uh, to purchase something that, you know, if they accepted Bitcoin. Uh, in fact, let's try that out. But before I take that thought too much further, I just wanted to point out that they did not set up a, a recovery phrase for me, right? So a normal uh, cryptocurrency wallet where you control the private keys, even if it's on your phone, is going to have you set up a uh, backup phrase. Uh, because the private keys are being held on the device. This wallet does not appear to be a wallet that has the private keys uh, on the device. It looks more like a, a kind of a hot wallet, kind of a web-based wallet. 
So my assumption here is that I don't really own the Bitcoin. I am the authorized user of this Bitcoin, right? By virtue of me setting up this app and connecting my ATM card to it. But uh, for all intents and purposes, they own the Bitcoin and not me. So if you wanted to uh, buy some Bitcoin and uh, maybe spend it right away, uh, this would be a great handy way to do it. But for long-term storage, I would not recommend storing your Bitcoin on an app like this because uh, it looks like they're the custodians of the Bitcoin. But let's check it out. Let's uh, go back to Bitcoin and let's see what happens if we do sell. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right. So it's not giving me the option to send it anywhere. Let's try enable withdrawals. Uh, it wants me to verify my address uh, with my driver's license or state ID. Uh, so I can do that too. Uh, most of the newer Bitcoin apps and exchanges are uh, being compliant with the KYC uh, regulations know your customer regulations so we have to verify who we are in order to send and receive Bitcoin all right so it wants to check out the camera and it wants me to hold up my ID all right so it likes that now it wants the back of the card again oh it got it all right good so now that I've given it my life story and my exact location and my face. All right, so I'm going to smile for the camera. All right. Now it's going to have to verify uh, that I am who I say I am. And they will let me know soon. <laughs> and we'll see. Then we'll be able to figure out if I can withdraw this. You may be wondering, why am I trying to do this? Uh, if you're not that experienced with Bitcoin, uh, you may not realize that Bitcoin can also be moved around. It doesn't, you know, it's not necessarily something that you can only buy and sell. Uh, it's something that you can move around and store in different places, uh, just like you could cash. You know, you can put your cash in a wallet. You can put it in your glove box. You can put it at the bank or wherever you want to move your cash around that's entirely up to you Bitcoin is just like cash only digital so uh, there are destinations this uh, in this case the Bitcoin is being held by the company that runs this wallet I would like to move this Bitcoin off of here into my own wallet I don't want to just sell it for cash I want to keep the Bitcoin I just want to move it somewhere else all right, so I'll hang out and see how long this uh, authorization takes. Okay, so it took a while. I stopped recording the video and uh, I picked up when I got the alert. And it's been less than 24 hours. Uh, it's pretty early in the morning here in Los Angeles. Uh, I was up fairly early and I heard a text come in. And they informed me that uh, now I'm able to withdraw Bitcoin from the Cash app. So uh, a little bit of a wait, but not that long, you know, considering they verified my identity uh, and the card that I'm using and everything else uh, appears to be in good working order. So now uh, I have been uh, enabled to withdraw the Bitcoin. So let's see what happens when we withdraw the Bitcoin, see how that works. All right, so we're going to go back over to the Cash app. And let's take a look here. Uh, this is the home page. So we want to go up to the top here where uh, it's got this uh, icon. And that's going to allow me to uh, look at the different options here. And as you can see, I've got the Bitcoin wallet down here. And uh, I'll just tap that. And it shows me my balance. And then I'm going to scroll down a little bit here where it says withdraw Bitcoin. So what I'm going to do is withdraw Bitcoin uh, to my own wallet and we'll see how that goes. So I need uh, an address to withdraw the Bitcoin to. So uh, I'm going to pull up my own wallet. I'm going to get the receiving address and then we'll use that when we uh, withdraw Bitcoin from the Cash App. 
So I'm going to go, uh, first of all, I'll turn off screen sharing momentarily. All right, I'm going to go over here and I've got my Trezor connected and I'm going to use uh, my Trezor hardware wallet as my destination. So I just go over here to receive and I'm going to get this address here. Now uh, I can just click this to show the full address and just confirm on the Trezor that that is the same address that is showing here. All right, I'll hit continue there. Now I can see the entire address. Now I've got a QR code here, so uh, I'm wondering if the Cash App supports that. I'm just going to give that a try. Make life a lot easier because as you can see the Bitcoin address is pretty long and uh, complicated as well it should be. So let's uh, bring this one uh, back up again. All right, I'm gonna hit withdraw Bitcoin on the phone. Um, okay, so I have a balance of uh, 0 0.0063 basically and then I've got this slider here and it can, let's see, there you go. It looks like that's the uh, max that I'm able to withdraw. I could withdraw less if I had a lot of Bitcoin in here. We're just using a small test amount, so I'm just gonna withdraw it all, and I'll just tap withdraw down here. All right, and there, I've got that QR code, so I can just hold it right up there, and that is the address of my Trezor, so that's going to work just fine. That was very easy. I'm going to hit confirm on the phone. And then uh, I'm going to have to enter my PIN. And that worked just fine. So I'm going to hit done. And it should show me that my balance is zero on the Bitcoin. And it looks like something happened over here on the Trezor. And sure enough, there's uh, 2874 that just came in on the Trezor. So um, it doesn't look like I suffered much of a hit on the Bitcoin network. The fee for that transaction was pretty darn low. Because if I remember correctly, uh, I think my balance was around $24.79 when we first got the Bitcoin on the Cash App. So we did pretty good. The Cash App did not charge us a heavy fee when we bought the Bitcoin, and uh, we didn't get much of a hit when we transferred the Bitcoin uh, to the Trezor. But that really did not have anything to do with uh, the Cash App or the Trezor in any way. That was just uh, the state of the Bitcoin blockchain network at this moment in time. Fees go up and down on the Bitcoin network depending on how heavy the traffic is. In 2017, uh, at the end when Bitcoin was really hot, the uh, fees and the time uh, to do a transaction got very uh, heavy. <laughs> the time went up and the fees went up. Uh, right now, um, I incurred a very small transaction fee on the Bitcoin network. Uh, so that's the way Bitcoin should work. Okay, so to wrap up, uh, we downloaded the Cash app. We purchased some Bitcoin using the Cash app indirectly by using our ATM card. We funded the transaction with our ATM card. Uh, we got a Bitcoin balance in the Cash app. And then uh, during that process, we had to go through some KYC procedures, verifying our identity. And I'm able to purchase Bitcoin and then withdraw to my own wallet. And uh, it worked pretty well. It didn't take very long. So all in all, I'm impressed. But as I mentioned, the Cash app that we installed on our phone is not strictly a uh, Bitcoin wallet per se of the type where you control the private key. There are phone apps like that that store the private key on the device and that you have the backup phrase in case you lose uh, your phone. In this case uh, it's more of a, a hot wallet or a web-based wallet, an internet-based wallet as it were, in which they are the custodians of your Bitcoin. Uh, but you uh, 
everything is fine if you want to withdraw the Bitcoin and bring it into your own wallet. But while it's on the Cash app, it's basically in their possession. Uh, they're the custodians of the Bitcoin. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I, I hope you explore the Cash app. It's a really uh, good, easy way to buy Bitcoin and a good way to even spend the Bitcoin. As you saw, I could go into a store that accepted Bitcoin and send directly from my phone, uh, easy peasy, not having to type anything in, just scanning uh, a Bitcoin uh, address app. So that worked really well. I'd like to remind everyone that I have a live stream every Friday night, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Please join me for the live Q&A in L.A. Uh, throw out any questions that you have. I'll try to get them answered on the fly or just join in the discussion and have a great time. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.